Hi and welcome to the final instalment of the Prusa Box build. Today we're going to be looking at the plexiglass doors, the hinges and the catches that go on each of the doors. So let's start. The hinges which we've already put part of them onto the uh, Prusa Box so you've got the pins here that we popped in earlier temporarily and these are the other part of the hinge now in the print box website it says to hammer these in but now we do have to add the square nuts in every slot that you find so I'm going to be putting those in in fact that one's gone in really quickly so I'm going to put all the square nuts in and we'll go from there. I've now added all of the square nuts to the hinge fittings. One thing I, I need to do is take the protective cover off of the perspex. Let's see how difficult or easy that may be. Just using my nails. There we go. So I'll do that for all of the pieces on both sides. Just be careful then once it's off it, it is very easy to scratch. Before I put the hinges on I've also got the catches that we'll have to install at the same time. They also require a square nut and they will go, this will be on the outer side, the handle, the inner side will go in and they interlock and you'll need to use the longer screw to go through. So let's have a look to start with. Um, so I believe the orientation is correct so I'm going to put a hinge here So here is the first panel, we have two hinges using the small screws, I remember the, the square nuts that have to go in, pins are in and then we have the locking me mechanism here. So on, on both holes, so you have larger holes for those to go through. So let's have a look to see what they look like. So you have to have the door quite wide open otherwise it, it will, the hinges won't go in because of these little sticking out parts. Closes nicely. It overlaps and now a lot of enclosures don't overlap. There's a gap. They actually fit inside the aperture so you have a gap all the way around. Whereas this unit is more of a sealed unit and the catches, it appears that the catches go a particular way. Uh, let's have a look and see. Yep, yeah. one, two, and there we go. That is nicely overlapped. That should help keep the heat in and the dust out. So that's quite impressive. Good. So I'm going to go around and do exactly the same on all the other sides. The Obviously the, there are single doors either side. They are quite large doors. Uh, but I guess that the main one will be the front one that will be used. But at least you've got access on all four sides. So back in a moment to see how we get on. So where are we now? I've got 
most of the doors on, uh, one more to go. Uh, one thing I do want to mention and is a correction regarding the hinge pins. Now the mounts that actually bolt, excuse me, the mounts that actually bolt to the frame, the hinge pins can just drop in, but they don't go right to, to the very bottom. Now I was assuming that was the correct place and let's have a look at the, the other part which would go in, let's pop it in that way. I thought that was sufficient enough but as you can see it's really loose and I found the, the doors really wobbly. So. Looking at the instructions again, it is recommended that they are popped in with a hammer. They only have to go about another couple of millimetres in, so you could just hit them with a hammer. Or in my case, uh, if you've got a vice or a G-clamp, I'm just going to pop the G-clamp over a couple of turns, well not even that, and it's in enough. You can't over tighten the G-clamp because the pin will just stop at the base anyway. So that's not now nice and firmly in and I'm able to pop this last item on for the top hatch. So that will actually be going around that way. I've put the hinges on the top hatch and the handles. So those are all ready. The filament guide, so that will be going in. And the final part, because I've put the, the lighting cable in, there is a, uh, a cable tidy for that. If you look at the cable tidy section, this is one of the items. So what I will do at the, the back, I've got to put that behind the hinge. So these two hinges here, I'm going to remove. I'm going to use the longer bolts and then bolt all the way through. The idea is this will be in the corner and these particular little teeth here will engage in and clamp on and the cable will be able to go into the top and pop out of the bottom. So I'm going to do that part now. So here we have the final build. Everything is completed for, for the basic structure. Um, let's have a quick look. So on the top here we have the opening and closing door. That can be removed only when it's open and it's closed it can't slide side to side. The cable tidy, let's see if I can show you which is at the very back here which clips in uh, involved let's see if we can zoom that in a little bit more possibly uh, involved uh, putting the, the clip in and putting long bolts through to the hinge. So that's worked really quite nicely. Kept all the cables nice and clean. Doors are all closing well. And as they overlap I think that's going to keep a lot of heat in. So anyone thinking of uh, ABS is probably ideal, but obviously I haven't tested it yet, but I suspect it will retain the heat as there's no gaps around the doors. So there we have it. We finally got there. If you're actually building this from scratch without having to film every part of it, then it's probably going to take one to two hours, I would think, probably less. Um, Obviously I've been starting and stopping all the time, so it's taken me quite a long time. But it won't, wouldn't take very long to do. Um, overall, very pleased with it. It's been designed and thought out very well. Um, 
yeah what what can I say I'm very very pleased with it and I'm really looking forward to doing the modifications so that starts with uh, extractor at the back which is probably quite important as this is sealing let's do that up a little bit basically the, there's no gaps around the, the uh, between the door and the frame so it's going to seal in very well so an extractor will probably be quite important uh, certainly for temperature regulation we've got the lighting to add uh, Raspberry Pi Octodash 5 inch screen and probably a few other features as well oh yeah what one thing I want to uh, add is uh, an exhaust fan on the power supply to help draw cool air through and through the back so that's that's another thing I want to be able to do uh, what else have we got oh yeah when you're fitting the doors just one extra thing um, the hinges the, the holes for the hinges are at the top and then slightly midway up so don't fit, don't put the hinges on the wrong way around as I happened to do initially so just just be aware there's a right way and a wrong way on the front and the rear door um, oh and finally if you get lots of finger marks on the stainless which I found happened just grease off your fingers uh, a little bit of baby oil I know it sounds funny but a little, little bit of baby oil on a rag not too much at all you don't want to make it slippery but wipe that over and it will take the fingerprints off it will clean it really well it's also good for like kitchen extractors if you've got a stainless steel one so just a little tip if you find you're getting it covered it completely covered in in finger marks so if you like these videos I really would appreciate if you could subscribe uh, that, that would be really helpful and by doing that you'll be informed of the next videos that I do for the modifications uh, for this particular Prusa box. Right, well thank you very much and see you next time.